Today we're talking about the 10 most wanted toys on the planet. The holy grails, the white whales, that's what we're talking about today on Ed's Retro Geek Out. Now before we start with the top 10, I'd like to point out that maybe the name Holy Grail or a white whale, your Moby Dick within toy collecting, isn't the right word to use for these type of toys. These are just really uncommon, really rare, or the price that they're asking for it these days is just too much for the average collector to put down right at once. And plus there's definitely some nostalgia involved in my list. Anyways, here's my top 10 most wanted toys, Holy Grails, well, you know, it's overused. You know what I'm talking about. Let's start. Creeping up to us in the number 10 spot is the Kenner Alien from the first movie. Somewhere around uh, 79 is when they put it out. This is one of the toys that's known to be banned and somehow it ended up in loads of discount bins. So some get out to the public. Obviously at the time you weren't supposed to really market toys to kids that came out of a PG-13 movie or like a, a space horror flick, you know, um, but that's what makes it cool. I think that, you know, uh, seasoned collectors also have this one on their radar list of must have toys just because just because the history behind it, behind Kenner creating this type of toy for a movie tie-in. What really attracts me to it is I'm a really big fan of the Alien franchise. I love all of those movies. I love the toys that came out later in the 90s by Kenner. And this toy has been put out multiple times after. So you have reissues. I bumped into one a couple years ago at a toy fair and didn't really pull the trigger. Um, but the time, I should have pulled the trigger on this was when I bumped into an original vintage one still in the box over at a flea market. At the time, it was a lot of money for me. It was around 200 bucks they were asking for and I was like, mm, I don't know, that seems like a lot of money to spend on a toy. Had I known what I know now, and this is probably the story with most of these things because I've, I've, I've looked at it before, I've held it in my hands, so I know they're real, I know they exist, they're not you know, holy grails, I know they exist, or more like the white whales, the Moby Dicks. I should have probably pulled the trigger back then. It just looks daunting, this huge scale alien that you can play around with and it even has the little mouth coming out. So that's the one. On to the next. In number nine spot, we have a Mattel creation called Gregory Bat. Um, this is one, and you're probably gonna notice that I like a lot of monsters which I don't have too many of in my collection right now. So Gregory Bat was put out by Mattel and it was basically just a bat, a really big, cool looking bat. And it had this blood pump thing on his belly. So that's what made it really cool to have. And ever since I saw this toy, I heard about this toy while I was looking around, you know, learning about collecting and stuff. And that's when it really caught my eye and I was like, ooh, this is something I'm definitely, you know, going to be on the lookout for. I haven't found one uh, yet, but I know they're out there. So if I ever end up bumping into one, I'm definitely going to consider um, no matter what price, honestly, because I, I don't think a lot of these survived. Um, so, yeah, number nine spot goes out to Grigori Bat. Number eight, we're sticking with the monsters, but this one was part of the Shogun Warriors. So yeah, a 70s toy line. I know uh, I usually don't talk about 70s stuff, but the Shogun Godzilla toy that came out within the Shogun Warriors universe um, <coughs> just captivates me. I uh, love the look of the toy. He's got the tongue action that He's got the tongue action that slides out. He has his, his, his hand that you can shoot out just like, you know, most of these Shogun Warriors you could do with. But this is just uh, a cool looking toy. And what I always loved doing with these big monster toys was, you know, just introduce them with the other toy lines I was playing with. With Ghostbusters, you could pretend it was a ghost that they had to fight. With Turtles, it was just another creation of Krang and Shredder, which the Turtles had to, you know, think about and think how they could win from this gigantic monster. So it was always fun throwing these in the mix. He meant the same thing if you would have like a big giant if you would have like a big giant Godzilla, like I have over here, which I have, you know, hanging off of my firehouse, my Ghost Busters firehouse there. It's cool because you can incorporate it in w with everything. So uh, definitely like loads of big monsters are on this list. And the Shogun, Godzilla, yeah, I, I, I need to have it on there. So far, I've only come across one and he was missing the, the hand that shoots out that works as a missile. So I didn't really go for it. 
Came back 15 minutes later and it was already gone. Although I would really like to just get this one when it's complete. Number seven, we're sticking with the monster trend and this is the Kraken from the Clash of the Titans toy line, also by Mattel, uh, another monster. This one is really big. It was featured in one of the last episodes I did on toy history. And it's just one of those toys I saw it once and I knew I wanted to have it, but it's part of this toy line that was based on one movie. The toys, the action figures kinda uh, worked in the same way as the Kenner Star Wars figures. They were the same height and uh, yeah, you had this gigantic representation of the Kraken uh, the big monster within that movie. It's the same thing, like I said, with, you know, the Imperial Godzilla toys or something like that. It's something I would love to add to my collection just to be able to pop that, you know, somewhere next to my Master of the Universe and have, you know, Skeletor trying to fight it off or something like that. Most of these toys on here are definitely like late 70s, early 80s, when I wasn't around, when I wasn't born yet. And uh, it seems like uh, I, I honestly never see these things around. Maybe it's just because I hardly see them and I know about them that I want them. It's one of those things I really like to ask you guys in the comments. Um, if you know about a Holy Grail and you've never maybe had it before, why do you really want it? Is there there's no nostalgia involved. Is it just because something looks really cool or what is your reasoning behind wanting these holy grails? In number six spot, I'm going to put something that you can probably use for all of your action figures. And it's, you know, some of these, it's play sets. <laughs> Uh, it's something I really love to collect. I know for most collectors, when you don't have room, I mean, I don't really have too much room left in my room as well. It's it's hard to buy because you need to stock it somewhere. But it's there's so much cool stuff you can do with this. You can, you know, like for this fire station, you could have, you know, your turtles in there. I have Spider-Man hanging from it. It's New York. I mean, he could be there, you know, at the time that Ghostbusters were, were walking around in the 80s. So... That could definitely work, but there's so many playsets out there that had, you know, a toy line with one playset and it's hard to find. Like the Ice Castle from Black Star is one I'm really hoping I, I could just bump into. You have the Masters of the Universe knockoff castle. That's like the eco monster castle. That's something really cool I would love to add to my Masters of the Universe collection. I'm thinking Fortress of Fangs, which is like the Dungeons and Dragons toy line. Um, but one of, you know, the hardest play sets to get. And another part about play sets is trying to get it complete. Some of these come with so many little parts, but I think the one that's highest on my list is definitely going to be Master of the Universe Eternia. Now, I've seen a couple of these. They look amazing. They're gigantic. And I'm just always impressed when I look at one of these as something I would love to add to my Master of the Universe shelf. Not that I would have room, but I'd definitely be making room for it. Unfortunately, this playset is, you know, along the lines of the US flag, the G.I. Joe big playset. set. It's, it's one of the most expensive ones out there. So definitely Eternia is going to be my number six spot. That's one I would love to add. And you know, I just have to throw it out there as well. The Thundercats layer is also something you don't see too often. So just lots of play sets on number six, honestly. Another part about collecting and something I often see connected to this is my holy grail is nostalgia. It's something you had as a kid or you played with as a kid back in the day and now you just don't have it. You don't have the resources to find it or it's just too uncommon. For most people, some of their holy grails are just stuff they had back in the day and now they wish they had again. For me, one of the things that I would really love to add in the next year and I'm willing to free up, you know, a budget for it is the, is the roller, is the roller cats, is the roller cats. What's a roller cat? Now, for me, it's the Thundercats sword, the Eye of Thundera, the role-playing sword. That thing I used to play with so much. It wasn't mine. It was like a friend of mine uh, where I used to hang out after school. He had it, and we played with it so much. This is one of the coolest role-playing swords ever. Uh, it's not just cheap plastic, you know, like the handle is made of a tougher plastic. Uh, you have obviously the blade uh, which got bent very easily and you had a battery compartment which would allow you to press a button and then the eye or the, th the Thundercats logo would light up in the middle. It's definitely like my holy grail. I mean if I could get one in the box that would be 
freaking amazing, but I, I'd settle for just getting one even without like the battery cover. Just because I know I played with that so much back in the day. It's something that's definitely high on the nostalgia list for me, and that's why it hurts so much. I mean, there's... There's a couple out there, but they're always asking so much money for these. So I'm probably not the only one. In the fourth spot, we have another one of my nostalgia moments. Not that I owned it or played with it back in the day, but Dino Riders was one of the VHS tapes I watched over and over again. And well, the big, the, the grand piece de resistance in this toy line was the Dino Riders T-Rex. This magnificent beast of the Rulons is just epic. The thing, the thing though with Dino Riders is they're made of this really weird plastic that breaks so easily. I do have a shelf dedicated to some of them and I'm so fortunate to have them. They're already hanging together with some tape and some glue, some of the parts, because they just break so easily. But the Dino Riders T-Rex is definitely, you know, one of the coolest toys out there. Um, so that one is very high on my list. Again, it's not cheap, but yeah, that's why they're on this, this Holy Grail list, because it's my Holy Grails. So uh, what's your holy grail? Leave it down in the comments below. Now another thing that I believe that can really turn you into wanting a toy is when our people share it. I think it's probably like over a year ago that Analog Toys and Toy History seem to all be talking about Action Force. This is the pallet toy version of G.I. Joe in the UK before it became the G.I. Joes we know from the 80s, you know, the little guys. They reused some of the vehicles, but they had their own story and they had multiple divisions within the Evil Army and the Good Army. So, one of these was the Red Shadows, and they had the best looking vehicle ever that they never used in the G.I. Joe toy line. This thing is called the Red Shadow Robo Skull. And this thing looks just crazy. This thing looks crazy. Like, I mean, if you walked into a toy store back in the day and this thing was looking at you, you were like, Mommy, I, I, I want that thing. To me, it looks kind of like this Gorilla Skull thing with, you know, lasers shooting out everywhere. You can morph it around so it can stand, it can fly around. It just looks amazing and the red just makes it look even more daunting. So this one, I know, it's it's just because everybody started talking about it. I started following the hashtag Action Force and Robo Skull on Instagram and I was like hooked. I was like, oh man, this looks so cool. I knew, I knew about Action Force before, but it's just when other collectors start talking about it, start appreciating it, uh, it, it kind of like makes you think about, do I want this toy as well? So that's why it's on the list, the Robo Skull. Then in the number two spot, I want to talk about knockoffs and bootlegs. I know this seems like a countdown, but it's just 10 toys I'd really like to add, and I'm not sure if I can ever do it. Um, so don't take this order too seriously. But yeah, for me, Masters of the Universe knockoffs is where it's at. Um, often there's like a ton out there, but some of these toys have become really cool collectibles. I know like, a couple of years ago, everybody was like, yeah, nobody wants the knockoffs. Some people were, you know, early adopters and they were like, these look cool. I already have all the Masters of the Universe, so now I'm going to start collecting these knockoff toys. Often, the plastic isn't the same quality as what, you know, the original toy lines were putting out. So, so you know, they break more easily and they're often, you know, just looked at as trash and thrown away. That's why they're more scarce. That's why they're uncommon. That's why they're rare to find complete. And uh, I'm going to pop two, two toys in here that I'd really like to add. Uh, probably everybody wants to add these. You know, if you're into Skeletor, if you're into Scareglow, you're going to want these toys because they look so freaking cool. One of them is the Remco Skull Man, who looks really awesome. He looks like a mix between Scareglow and Hordak, you know, with the red cape, but he's just got, you know, like a skull and he's screaming and... Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why. I just love that toy. I love the way it looks. The other one is the Speclatron Debt Lore, uh, which I've also spoken about on the channel before. But uh, yeah, this one was cool. This toy had a really cool mechanic where, you know, his torso was clear. Um, it had a liquid inside and on the back you had a button and it allowed the liquid to twist around within the torso. And they had the glitters. So this was a glitter toy marketed to boys, but it looked so daunting again. Put a skull on a 5.5 Motu body and you got my attention. That's, that's what this is leading into, honestly. 
So yeah, um, there's a lot more bootlegs out there that I think most of you will probably have on your lists. So if you have a list of your top five or your top three most wanted toys, please leave them down in the comments and, and maybe I'll get inspired to add some more and start looking for some. <laughs> And this is what it comes down to, the number one spot, even though I debunked the whole running order, uh, just one thing earlier. But anyways, here we go. Uh, I'm a big Team and T collector. I do own a lot of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff already, but there's a ton. I, I don't even think I own 10% of what is out there. There's obviously, you know, stuff like a scratch or a hotspot that I would love to add, but there's a couple more toys out there now, definitely with, you know, the influx of turtle collectors. They're starting to go up, like, really high, even beyond what a scratch is going for. So most of the toys that I would put on, like, a grail pedestal of things that I would love to add, TMNT-wise, are already in my possession. It's stuff I had before, it's stuff I wanted to get boxed, and uh, apart from a few toys on card. I pretty much have all the vehicles I had as a kid and uh, the play sets in box now. So what it comes down to is, do I really want a Holy Grail? Do I really want a white whale within the TMNT collector community? And that adds down to the prototypes. Um, the stuff that was, you know, the stuff that was the source material for the molds of the toys that were distributed millions of times over the world. Everyone that was born in the late 80s probably had a turtle toy in his hands. And, uh, well, there's, you know, a mold, a, a wax mold, there's a hard copy, there's a resin mold of it. And uh, those are the things that are truly the holy grails. Those are like, um, not one-offs, but probably like less than 10 of them out there in the world and uh what it comes down to for me i think the ultimate holy grail for me would be having one of the pitch turtles so the pitch turtle is the turtle concept that was made by varner studios and it was introduced to mirage studios kevin eastman peter laird and they looked at it and they were like okay we're gonna go with playmates on this so it was basically like this donatello uh turtle with like a bow staff pose and they painted all of them in, in a different bandana color so if i could get my hands on one of those uh, it would definitely be like the holy grail like the holy grail in, in existence for me because for me that pitch turtle the way that looked is a pivotal moment in the creation of this toy line if it didn't look that way they probably wouldn't have gone with playmates and we wouldn't have had a decade of turtle toys in the original line to collect for right now so that's why that's my number one i i, I don't think i'll ever be able to, to get one of those but uh you know I've, I've i've seen a couple out there you know yeah so uh maybe uh, one can only dream so yeah guys thanks so much for watching this little video i hope i inspired you a bit i hope i didn't cause you to go to ebay too much and press the buy it now because that might end up being an expensive night for you um definitely leave down in the comments below what your holy grails is or what your thoughts are on this whole wanted list this whole why do people call it holy grails leave it all in the comments down below i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you're really into 80s and 90s toy content you can always subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell it's all free and you'll get notified on every new video that comes out weekly if you want to do more you can always check out my patreon page uh like to thank everybody who is on my patreon supporting it it makes all of these videos possible to make also follow me on all my socials instagram facebook and stuff like that thank you so much for watching i hope to see you in the comments and in the next video see you later bye